up our Rotary of the Day, Kevin Clark. All right, so we're going to continue our series of legislative updates. We have Senator John, or Representative John Talley and Representative Trish Ranson and representing each side of the aisle. Give us an update on their perspectives on the legislative session that we just completed. Yes. Yes. Hi, Trish. No, seriously, I'm I'm glad we're doing it this way because um, nationally, you get uh, the wrong perspective of people not working together, and in the state, you don't hear enough of Democrats and Republicans working together. So I'm glad we're doing it this way. Well, I would also agree, but I think also in the state, we have a, a large population across the, of Oklahoma who do not know who their state representatives are. So um, this is, forums like this is very good so that that way you can put a face to a name. So I am the representative for House District 34, which is the heart of Stillwater. And we are standing and sitting in House District 34. Well, thank you for letting me be in your district. <laughs> and I'm pretty much around uh, Stillwater. And um, yes, we need to do a, a legislative update, but you can read about that all the time in the newspapers, in our articles and things like that. But there are things that go on that people don't know about. For example, um, March 1st, it was about March 1st, I get a call from the city attorney of uh, Yale. And he said, John, we're gonna go bankrupt over here. I, why? Because it didn't affect me that much. And that is that storm, the 15th through the 19th of February, every person in Yale is gonna have to pay $24,000 in the next two weeks. Uh, because of the, the cost of natural gas. And he said, what are you going to do about it? Because you're in my district. And I'm like, I have no idea. So I go knock on the speaker's door and I said, and he said, John, come on in. What's wrong? And I said, well, Mr. Speaker, I've got a small town in Payne County that's going to go bankrupt if we don't get some money to him. You know, what are we going to do? And he said, Yale. He's from Atoka. And I'm like, yes, how did you know? And he said, there are 32 unincorporated cities in Oklahoma that are facing the same problem. And so uh, Gary Mice from uh, Guthrie was on a committee, his committee, and, and we started working on this. And that's the kind of thing that people don't really see that much, but they're not going to go bankrupt now. We got some bonds together and they're gonna borrow some money up to 30 years and it's gonna be about $25 per month extra on their bill so that they don't go bankrupt. So it's weird. I am so thankful for all the legislators across the United States that run one, because people say very rude things about you that aren't true. And, and you can't do anything about it. And then when you're down there, you, you solve a lot of problems or you try to, and nobody knows about it. So it's a weird thing. So I was wondering, were there any, I, I know of some that you've been working on, but because we talk a lot, is there any you want to bring up that behind the scenes, some things that somebody may not know about you want to mention? Gosh. <laughs> well, um, are you talking about consti like constituent yeah, issues? Yeah. Um, mostly this last year has been unemployment. Um, that has been the number one issue um, with constituents calling into my office in the sense that they have done what they need to do, they hit a roadblock, they get tagged as fraud, 
um, no fault of their own. And then there's absolutely no payout at all. And sometimes even repeat where we get them through that, that stretch. And then the next time that it re-ups, they get tagged again. And so trying to make sure that they get the, the funds that they need um, and that their families need. Um, so that was been the number one thing this last year. I, I would say that's my number one also. But also number two, I would say is people calling in about DHS mm -hmm. problems. And then maybe number three are school things. Any, anything to do with schools is, is my, would be my third phone call. And I'm talking maybe a thousand phone calls about, DA, or about uh, unemployment this past year probably 150 about DHS and then um, probably 50 about schools and stuff. Things that you cannot imagine, like, um, <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that right? Um, for example, there was a family that moved from Chandler to Cushing and, and it's a, a very severe, uh, medical problems and so Cushing didn't want to let them into their school and Chandler didn't want to let them go back and and so they were in a dilemma and they called me and I my wife you know is a retired special education teacher and she said and she looked it up and federally could Chandler couldn't keep that kid from coming back and so we had to go down there and talk to them and, and help them understand that there are certain federal guidelines you can't get by. That's true. And I think one of the things about this job that they, they don't tell you, because <laughs> probably if they, they did, you might not want to run. Um, but you just, you never know what each day is going to bring. And so, you know, the, the, um, the quote from Forrest Gump, the life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Um, and that's pretty much every day. And, and whatever you get is probably going to have some nuts in it. And so, uh, so uh, yeah, and it's um, right now it's, it, it comes in waves. So we had the unemployment and that's starting to settle, but then now we've ended federal unemployment assistance, which then that's causing some other hardships for um, quite a few people across the state. But now getting a driver's license, raise your hand if you have renewed your driver's license to a real ID yet. Okay. Good. It is a pain in the neck. Hey, perfect. If you could straighten that out, that would be great. Um, and, you know, and you think, okay, well, I mean, we're in the 21st century. Well, I don't want to go down and make an appointment because that's just going to take too much time. I'm going to, I'm going to renew online and get just like a regular ID online. Well, they're backlogged till April. They're filling driver's license now from April. That's completely reversed. And so then that's the issue of how come someone hasn't lost their job on this? This is ridiculous. Because the whole thing when Governor Sitt came into office, his thing was customer-focused government. We're going to get it streamlined so that pe people can get to their government, and it's going to be quick, and it's going to be easy. And this is far from it. So that's the frustrations in the job and not, never knowing of like, okay, I'm going to check my email today. What's it going to be? <laughs> and, and it is, it's like, it could be something DHS. It could be driver's license. It could be um, an issue that we go down the rabbit hole and nothing is resolved because there isn't a resolution. So then how do you handle that going forward? And what are the other alternatives in the situation? It's a lot of critical thinking. It's a lot of, of that. So you're exactly right. Like one day I got an email. Hey, we're closing the prison in Cushing. Yeah. Well, that's 300 jobs in Cushing. And for that size town, that's a big deal. Um, and uh, like two weeks later, uh, a gas company said, we're not going to supply Cushing total with any natural gas 
you're going to have to find it somewhere else. Well, it's not like you go to Walmart and buy, you know, so many units of natural gas to supply a whole city. So, yes, thank you for bringing that up. Yes. Almost anything you can imagine, the, the DHS calls anything from, no, no. Um, somebody, see, like me looking across the street right now, we used to live in that house, by the way, um, and, and see you out there and spank your kid, and then DHS either doesn't do anything about it, or they come in and take your kid, and, and you have no recourse because they are very powerful and it's so did did they do it right did they do it wrong what can we do about it and so it takes a lot of phone calls and time to check into all these and you know we've got i would say the number one problem facing oklahoma is poverty. And DHS is part of that issue in the sense that we have children that are being removed from the home, um, rightly or wrongly, uh, just they're being removed from the home, but family members are not being, um, they're not being found as a possible uh, guardian for the child. Um, and you know, foster care is becoming overwhelmed. Um, we, are, we are in desperate need of foster care. And all of the issues with drugs and alcohol and substance abuse, they're all symptoms of the overall poverty. And I think getting back to session, this is one of the issues that has been the most frustrating for me is that we did a lot of things this last session. Um, we had a lot of money to spend um, uh, because of stimulus funds and CARES funds, um, but we really didn't address the needs of the poverty in our state. And so we have, if I had to give a grade to the session, I would say um, I would give it a C, because I'm a teacher, you know, um, but I would give it a C, it's passing, we paid the bills, we planned for things coming up this next year. Um, we were able to put some money back in people's pockets, um, all of these things, but there's a lot of room for improvement where we could have invested uh, a little bit more wisely in areas. Um, so just overall, but that, I figure, you know, I have to throw something in that you're gonna disagree with me on, so. <laughs> Give it a, I might give it a B plus, but definitely we can always improve. And everybody in this room, if you got stopped by the police um, and, and you got arrested, we would probably be able to get out of it. OK, but I take a lot of the OSU athletes and people to prisons to visit and they don't have the same because of poverty they don't have the same amount of well-to-do names, people they can call. Yeah, the, you know what I'm saying? Um, when I get stopped for speeding, which is often, thank you. <laughs> when he says to me, you know, and, and I'm who I am because of a highway patrolman in Anadarko, uh, Russell Taylor, when I was in the ninth grade, I already had 14 tickets. I had a motorcycle and I, for some reason, didn't know the laws that you couldn't have four people on a motorcycle. <laughs> and what's sad is that happened like four times. <laughs> and, you, and, and when you're 14, you can't be out past 10 o'clock at night and things like that. And, and so I had 16 tickets by the time I was 16. And he said, John, let me tell you, if you get stopped again, I mean, he didn't even ask me for my license. 
He was like, is your number still 447-545-845? I said, yes, sir. You still live at 709 West Alabama? Yes, sir. And, and so he said, if I stop you again, I'm going to arrest you. And so I don't know if I should be saying all this. <laughs> I might not get voted back in. Um, it was about midnight. I accidentally left my house with four other people on and we come around a corner headed to Fort Cobb Lake and he was sitting there and my friends jumped off in the bushes and I took off to a cornfield and at the end of the cornfield they forgot to turn off the the sprinkler system and so my little motorcycle and I just sank and then I was arrested and taken home. And, and he said, you know, in 30 days, I'll meet you at the courthouse. And, and eluding an officer and, and my 17th ticket, he said, it'll be a, at least a $1,000 fine and probably six months in Raider Juvenile Prison. And I was scared. And, and if people always wonder why I don't have a butt, it's because my dad beat it off. <laughs> and uh, so 30 days later, we walk up to the courthouse and, and I meet Russell Taylor. And he was a big highway patrolman. And he said, John, what have you learned? And I said, highway patrolmen are my friends. Police are my friends. And uh, he said, you know what? I believe you and I'm going to give you a second chance. And uh, I said, Okay, and he pulls out of his pocket my ticket, which I still have. And so um, he said, I never turned it in because I think you have potential. Do we do that to everyone? And so when I won three years ago, he was my first call. And he and his son run a steel fabrication uh, in Chickasha. So that's what I'm talking about. Do we, poverty is a big deal in Oklahoma. It is. And so um, a lot of the, the, the bills that have come forward um, this last session, it's, it's interesting because I often refer to the four points that we, we are four-way test, you know, when I see a bill. And the first one always catches me. Is it the truth? To whom is my next question? Because is it fair to all concerned? There's a lot of legislation that goes through the House and the Senate that is not fair to all concerned. It picks winners and it picks losers. And I have issue with those bills because I believe that Government should be here to help support our, our communities and to help support our society, public education, public health, public safety. And it needs to be fair for, for anyone, whether or not I agree with how they live their lives, whether or not I know them, whether or not where they come from, how they worship, any of that business, it needs to be fair. So um, there was quite a bit. I mean, I, I wrote things down because I wasn't sure what we were going to talk about. I never know what we're going to talk about when John Talley is up here. Because <laughs> like, it's like, wow, I did not know that story about you. Um, <laughs> now we all know it. Yes. Yes. Right. So to sum up, because I want to make sure 
Kevin asked me to make sure that the people on Zoom could hear the question. Um, we have Democrat, Republican here at the state level talking with one another, but we don't see or hear about that at the national level. And how does that play out? Um, you know, it's it's interesting. I believe, like, as I said, most of the I don't know about most, but there's a large majority of people who live across the state who do not know who their state representative is because they are watching national news and they're not seeing the state level news. Um, they're seeing that, you know, the Dems are in control and they they have all the power. Well, yes and no. I mean, it's it's 50 50. So they've got to talk a lot in order to get anything done. And I think that's the problem. The state, it's the exact opposite. We have 82 Republicans and 19 Democrats. So we have a supermajority in our state. So when there are issues like Medicaid expansion, which is a fabulous, and I'm really excited about this because that was a ballot initiative rather than a um, legislature decision because uh, the majority party did not want to address it for years. Um, and we're going to see some great changes going forward because poverty health is a big issue um, uh, in when we have the high level of poverty here but john and i have been friends forever and i know that as a member of the minority party where i can make a difference is not necessarily my vote it's my influence so the more i know of the majority party, the better. The more people that I can have open conversations where they're like, oh, well, you're not like the Washington Dems that I see on television. And I'm like, yeah, I'm Trish Ranson, you know? <laughs> so um, that's better. And that's been kind of what my focus has been the last three years. Well, uh, James, you and I don't agree on everything, right? That's for a fact. Okay, but and I've known James 40 years. We don't agree on everything, but why are we still friends? See, and I think it's because of respect. I hope it is. And, and so before we got elected three years ago, I respected Trish as a teacher, period. She's awesome. She's taught my grandkids. So that has carried over into the legislature. And I'm not sure... People respect people all the time just for going through the craziness of getting elected. That deserves respect. Just to go through that is crazy. So that's what I think is missing is kind of that respect for all people. Um, if, if somebody wants to ask any kind of question, we'll, we'll try to answer it as best we can. But my favorite part about being at the legislature is I don't have to know everything. I've got people in this room that I call all the time and say, what the heck do we do about health care? Well, you know, and if you remember last year, I was told that if I call people and ask their opinion, that I'm not a good representative because if you're voted in, you should be able to vote any way you want. Well, is that being a good representative if I don't ask you what's important to you. So before we leave, we, we did a lot of stuff the last year, okay? But we, did we do what you wanted done? And, and that's where in banking, what do we need to do? I, you know, it's weird to me, and, and, and we have money in a credit union here, but how come credit unions aren't, don't pay the same thing as, as banks? That's just interesting to me, but that's a federal thing, not a state thing. So some people will come to us and ask us federal questions that, and, and why don't you fix this? And we're like, you need to get, you know, Frank Lucas on the phone and tell him, which yesterday Frank was in town and some of us got to meet with him and I was totally shocked. The number one thing he brought up was getting shots for COVID. I, that just floored me because there's a lot of people in the state that say, one, COVID isn't real. No, I'm, I'm serious. 
I've had people call me and say, I'm a terrible representative because I think COVID's real. And, and I've had COVID and I got both shots, but I was told that I was an idiot and that they wouldn't vote for me and they're gonna work to not get me voted back in because COVID isn't real. I'm not saying some of the information out there isn't exactly right. It's COVID, we didn't know anything about it. But to say you're a terrible person because you got a shot isn't good. And to say, we're never going to make it mandatory. At the state level, we will never say everybody has to get a shot because that's breaking our freedoms. So it's a, golly, it's hard to live in a, a republic. Yes, it is. And the idea that because you're Republican and I'm Democrat, that we completely don't agree on all things is false. Um, because every, every issue, there's a spectrum. And so socially, I may be more liberal, but there are things like local control and fiscal responsibility that I am all about. Right. So, you know, there's, there are issues that we can find that we can find consensus and we can work together. We may not agree on X, Y, or Z, but we can work on the issues that we can find consistency, And that's what we need to have more of, especially at the national level. Agreed. What, what was one of your bills you got passed this year? Ah, so, um, no. You didn't get that one passed? <laughs> bring up the bad one. <laughs> no, I was, I was, your, I was, your, I was your author on that. Yes, so my traumatic brain injury bill did not pass. The governor pocket vetoed it. So what that means is he just let it sit on, its, on his desk and die. Um, a long, slow, arduous death. Um, I'm not bitter or anything about it, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but he did instruct Commissioner Fry to create a traumatic brain injury advisory group within the Department of Health to go forward. So theoretically, it could still work. So that's I've talked with Commissioner Fry and given I'm giving him the, the list of people that I have already interested in this group and the results of my interim study that I did on it in 2019 so that he has enough information to go forward. So that's hopefully still a success, even though it did not get signed. Um, House Bill 1759 got signed. That was the Computer Crimes Act. And we had uh, an instance here in Stillwater of uh, militia software. Um, and, and we're finding through this experience is that, you know, it's not really a state issue. We did need to make sure that ransomware and malware and that kind of thing is present in our statutes. Yes. And that's what the, the bill did. It updates our statutes to make sure that those terms are, are listed. But um, we're finding that these people who do this, this is like a a business sector where they have ratings, like they're like good hackers. I don't know, can I, if hackers can be good. I mean, but um, that, that they just take your money as opposed to put it on the dark web, you know, kind of thing. So that needs to be addressed. And that is a global economy issue. That is a global policing issue. And um, something that the, the national government and the president has been working towards going towards that. So that did pass. I know one that we worked on real hard was the marijuana stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we didn't, the, the medical marijuana is a problem because there's lots of people. How many of you know of a grow house that just popped up somewhere in that, you know, about in our, in Payne County? Yeah. And so we passed six, I believe, six laws that are working on this. And we're going to pass a couple of more next year that I know of. One is there were only three people that were going around checking across the whole state uh, who was doing things legally. And so we've told OMMA, you have to get like 90 more people that live in your area to go out and check on these and make sure that they're doing it legal because they're using a lot of groundwater, they're using a lot of rural water, they're using a lot of electrical power. 
and they're shipping it out of state, which is illegal. They aren't following the laws of seed to sell. So, um, you know, in Guthrie, I think there were six that were closed down. And so we're trying to do this across the state. So that's something that came up, Jenna. So let's talk, let's change that. Okay. Well, how is our time? Two minutes. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So just to wrap up, um, so session is complete and we have, um, we have interim season now. And so going forward, um, we will be researching issues, getting ideas for bills for next session, um, we have, uh, uh, we've got more redistricting, uh, public sessions, uh, we have to go towards the, the five U S congressional areas. And so we have to draw those lines. It's probably, we'll go into special session like September, October for that. Well, they're talking about the middle of October now going into special session. Okay. So we have redistricted our districts. Um, there's just been a little bit of change in House District 34 as far as the east boundary and the west boundary. So instead of Brush Creek, I have now my eastern boundary has moved to Jardot. Um, and then my western boundary includes all of OSU from western all the way up. So um, I took the vet med school from John. Um, so that's, that's going to be part of the, the changes. John's area is drastically different <laughs> well not really drastically but i lost perkins and the perkins people are really upset which they should be because i'm a rural guy and it's a rules so uh i did well i gained langston i i always go to langston anyway because i work for fca but uh so the perkins people are are making comments to try to get them back in and so what they're trying to do is give me back Perkins and give Kevin Wallace in 32, go around Payne County up and take um, Davenport, not Davenport, um, Drumright, and take Drumright instead of Cushing. So that's kind of the row. Perkins, sorry. Right. Well, I, I do an email almost every week and I do a column in the newspaper and so do you of some of the things, but I mean, we did 530 bills, is that right? Passed some, I mean, it, it was a lot. I don't know, I'm not sure you could even go through 530 bills. Well, and also, I mean, the, the, the nature of news itself is mainly it's television is number one, and then internet is the second way that people get their information. Making sure that we have um, broadband expansion across the state will help with that, but you're right. We need more coverage of what's happening in the state because basically what we see in the national news ends up bill information at the state level. 
Um, we saw several of the bills right there at the end of session of, oh, you know, CRT, um, vaccine passports, transgender athletes, all of a sudden these national issues became state bills because that's what people were, were watching on the news. Um, and so it's frustrating. You're right. And it's, how do we do that? I mean, just trying to be ever present right now. And that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. And that's what John's trying to do. So you can contact us all the time. I mean, I, I know she does. And I know I do. We answer every single email and phone call that you, that people put in. And it takes a lot, a lot of time. Like I just looked and I had 68 emails today. So probably half of those are, are questions, you know, I need help. What can you do about this? Um, you know, and then the other half are here's opportunities for you to be involved in. There's a chicken fried dinner in, you know, someplace, which is good. But I, I just think it's funny. I thought that when you're not in session, you don't do anything. Yeah, it's not true. It's not true at all. No, if you want to be a good representative, it's not true. Because I want to know what Ripley's doing and Yale's doing and Cushing's doing and Coyle's doing and, and the outskirts of Stillwater. I want to know what's going on and how we can change it. Um, I will tell you, you're not, none of you are invited, but just so you know, but Trish, you should come. I need a, no, I need a woman. Because I have a theory about guys, okay? Um, we average, when it's not COVID, we average about 3,000 kids a year coming to our house to do team building. Colleges, high schools. It's the crazy, McPherson, Kansas high school is coming to our house because they want to do team building. So I hire OSU students and student athletes, okay? Well, Sunday night, and I don't want this in the paper or anything. Sunday night, I've got 50 OSU football players and 30 police officers from Payne County uh, Sheriff's Department, OSU Police Department, and Stillwater Police Department coming to do team building to learn how to respect each other better and to get in each other's world, okay? Well, here's my theory. When I put girls, and you're a girl, in, in charge of guys, if they're disrespectful to my person that I put in charge, I think, here's my theory, that they're disrespectful to their coach or their boss behind their back. It's just the theory I have. So thank you for letting us be here. Contact us. Will you help me? Oh. Like I said, you never know what John Talley is gonna say. <laughs> Thank you so much to our speakers. Stillwater Frontier Rotary supports literacy, so we'll be donating a book to the Stillwater Library in your honor.